Hello and welcome to another episode in the GDScript Fundamental Tutorial Series. In this episode, we will be talking about class inheritance. Now to go over the definition again, a class inheritance is a mechanism where you can derive a class from another class for a hierarchy of classes that share a set of attributes and methods. In Godot, you can inherit from the following, a global class, another class file, and an inner class inside another class file. One thing to keep in mind is that in GDScript, multiple inheritance is not allowed. Now, to inherit from a class, simply use the extends keyword followed by a class name or a file path. Now, keep in mind when you decide to use a file path, you need to wrap it in double quotations, essentially turning it into a string. Now, when you do inheritance, you deal with two things, a base class and a derived class. A base class can also be referred to as a superclass, and a derived class can also be referred to as a subclass. Now, a subclass is the class that inherits properties from another class, the other class which is referred to as the superclass. A superclass is the class whose properties are inherited by a subclass. The word property is just a broad concept. Basically, it encompasses attributes such as class members and methods and relationships to other classes, such as inherited classes. Now, when you inherit, a derived class has the ability to use member variables and methods from the base class. Let's go ahead and take a look at an example. As you can see here, we have our classes, an animal file, or rather an animal class, and we have a horse class. Now, the horse class is the derived class, and the animal class is the base class. So animal is the superclass and horse is the subclass. Our base class, or rather the superclass, has a function called eat, which just prints out a statement to console, and it has a member variable food. One thing to keep in mind is that the horse class cannot have a member variable with the same name as food. Now, if you try in your horse class to declare a member variable called food, you will throw an error. And the error you will receive is a variable already exist error. To get around that, you use the constructor method. And from the horse class, you can assign or change the value of a member variable from your super class, in this case, the animal class. So as you can see here, in our constructor method in horse class, we are assigning the food with the value grass. Now what this does is we change the value from our derived class to the super class, and now if we were to access the method eat, what we will get is instead of saying eats something, what we will print out instead is eats grass. Now normally for something as simple as this, you wouldn't go ahead and use inheritance. You would probably use class objects, basically class instantiation. However, the real power of inheritance comes from the fact that you can have multiple classes as subclass and they can all inherit from a single base class. So for example, we have a horse class and through the constructor method, again, we are assigning food to the string value grass and in our new class file called frog, we are passing a value bugs into our food variable, again through the construct method. We'll take a better look at that through code examples later. Now, if you want to pass a value to your base class from your subclass, all you have to do is simply call the initialize function in your subclass. So in this example, we are in our horse class. And after the initialize function, we use the dot notation followed by a value inside the parentheses we want to pass to our super class. In this case, every time we create a horse class object, what we're going to do is initialize our horse class with the grass literal value and pass that to our food variable. If we want to actually use this class, for example, in a class object, all you have to do is simply create your standard variable followed by the class name, in this case, horse, followed by the new method. Now, when we create a class object like this, we're going to assign the grass variable, and that's no fun. What if you want to add variation to, to your objects? Well, to do that, instead of passing a literal value inside the parentheses, what you'll do is in your subclass, in the initialize function, what you're going to do is receive a parameter, or rather use a parameter. And then you take that parameter you just created, in this case, our parameter name is value, 
and we pass that value into the parentheses after it. So in this case, init parentheses value dot parentheses value. And now when we create a class object, as you can see here, when we call the new method and we pass, let's say, a literal value grass, what we do is we end up in the constructor method. Now grass is our value, and we simply pass that value to our superclass. And so now our superclass has the literal value grass and can do whatever it needs to do. In the case of our simple example, the base class will just assign the food variable, the literal string value grass. Now why exactly is inheritance important? Well, for one thing, inheritance allows for cleaner code. It makes it easier for you to define a class, especially when we want to make additional tweaks to a class. Now, basically you use inheritance when you want to reuse code from a class. Take, for example, our base class animal. What if your game needs 20 different types of animals? Instead of writing similar code in each class, what you can do is create one base class, one source of truth. And from there, your animals can derive from it, can it or rather, they can inherit from that base class and then you can just make small tweaks. So instead of writing, for example, 100 lines of code in each class, you can cut that down to maybe 10 or 20, depending on what you're adding to each individual class or rather subclass. The real power from inheritance is the ability to override. Now in GDScript, you are only allowed to override functions. You cannot override variables. Now, overriding allows a subclass to provide a specific implementation of a method that is already provided by its superclass. Take this for example. We have our animal class with the eat function, and we have our horse class. If we use the eat function, what we're going to do is call the eat function inside our base class, in this case, we're gonna print out eats food. But what if you want something else? What if you want something different? Well, in your horse class file, what you do is you write it out in the code, in this case, your eat function, and then you just write whatever you want. In this case, we're going to print out loves to eat it to the console. Now, every time you call the eat function, instead of calling the eat function in your base class, what you do is you end up calling the eat function in your current class, in this case, the horse class file. Now, an important thing to note is that in GDScript, you can have multiple layers of inheritance. I mean, by definition, inheritance implies that you can, you can have layers. So let's take a look at an example. Let's say your super class is the node class, and then your animal class inherits from the node class, and your horse class inherits from the animal class. Well, your horse class will now have access to not only the virtual methods in your node class, but it will also have access to methods and variables in the animal class. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example. As you can see here, we have the node class, our base class. We have the animal class, the subclass, and we have the horse class, which is a subclass of the animal class, which is the subclass of the node base class. Now in the animal class, we, ex we extend our node. So now we have access to the virtual methods node class provides. And we've also declared an eat function. Now let's say in our horse and frog class, we extend animal. Well, now we have access to the virtual method ready provided from the node class. And we can also call the eat function from the animal. Now some tips about inheritance. Inheritance is a powerhouse. It's very powerful when you use it with class constructors and class objects. Now again, it saves you a lot of time when writing similar class codes. For example, an animal class, especially if you're deriving a lot of classes from your base class. Now again, you use inheritance when you want to have lots of classes with similar code, but additional tweaks to their behaviors, either new or inherited methods. Now let's go ahead and take a look at some code. So as you can see here, we have our class animal. You can see we're using the class name animal. We have our member variable food, only takes in string values. And we have our initialize constructor method. In this case, we're allowing you to pass values down from your subclasses. And if you choose not to pass any value down from your subclass, we are also defaulting a literal string value something. As you can see here through this code, that is exactly what we're doing. Pass in a value to a parameter, use that parameter value, assign it to our food, and our food value is a member variable that only accepts string. And we have one function called eat. In this case, we'll print out to the console eating 
something. Now I went ahead and created a second class file called frog. And as you can see here, we are extending from the animal class. We are inheriting from the animal class. We went ahead and gave a name to this class file to the Godot editor. In this case, we've named it frog. And notice how all we have in this class file is the initialize function, the initialize constructor method, and we're passing a value down to our base class, in this case, the literal value bugs. As you can see here, take a notice. This is only seven lines of code versus the 12. Now, this doesn't seem a lot because these are just example files, but in the real, or rather in your production code, your scripts aren't going to be only 10 or 12 lines of code. They may be 50, 100, maybe even 200. And instead of writing 200 lines of similar code in our frog class, we can just basically bring it down to just the essentials in our constructor method, depending on how complex we want to write similar code, or depending on how complex we want our subclasses to be. In this case, we're just passing through the init method. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the horse class file. In this class file, we are extending from the animal class. We're inheriting from the animal class. We're giving this a class name that will show up in the Godot editor called horse. But notice how we're adding an additional member variable. Not only do we want the food variable that we're going to inherit from the animal class, we also want our own variable that we can use for this specific class. Now again, one thing to keep in mind, if we try to declare a variable with the same name that we inherit from our base class, in this case, the variable name called food, we're gonna throw an error. It's going to tell you this variable already exists. Moving on. We have our initialize function. And as you notice here, not only do we take in a value for a name that we are going to assign to the horse class member variable called first name, but we also want to take in a value for the food variable. We called it food and we want to pass it down to our base class. So our base class can use it. In that case, the base class is going to print out eats orange if we don't pass a value when we create a class object. However, check this out. We have our function called eat. What we're doing through this is we're overriding our base class's function. So our base class has a function called eat. And if we didn't declare this function, we would use that class's method. However, because we're declaring a function in this class file, when we call the function eat in, for example, a class object, what we're going to do is call this function. And this function is going to print out a name followed by really wants to eat that and then the value food. And on top of that, we've also added an additional function called sleep, where we print out the name followed by the words is sleeping. Now, lastly, putting all of this together, we have our class object, horse object, and we're going to create a new horse. In this case, we're going to pass to the class object a name, Darth Sidious, and we're going to pass in a value for the food variable called apple. And of course, for our frog object, we're just going to create a simple frog object. Now, as you can see here, through our class object, if we call the eat function, we're going to print out Darth Sidious really wants to eat that apple. And when we call the sleep function, we're going to print out Darth Sidious is sleeping. And when we call the frog objects eat function, the frog object doesn't have an eat function. So therefore it's going to use the base classes eat function. And it's simply going to put out or print out eating bugs. So again, for a more complicated horse class, when you want to pass down values and change values, you use the constructor method. If you want to pass down values from classes you've inherited, you got to use the dot notation followed by the value you want to pass. Make sure that data types are acceptable. And lastly, if you want to change member variables through instantiation, use the init constructor method, and then you just simply pass your variable or you simply pass your parameter value to your member variable. One thing to note is that you can actually access your member variables directly from the code. So even though we have the eat function, we can also call the food member variable. We can, of course, go ahead and assign it a different value. Well, that's all I have for you in this episode. Go ahead and download the GitHub file. I put a link down in the description below. 
When you download that file, go ahead and play around with inheritance. The more you practice, the better you'll be at understanding how inheritance works and how you can use it and apply it to your programming in your projects. Thank you for joining me in this episode. I look forward to seeing you in the next.